Mr. Rogers may have been one of the most pure human beings in television history, but that hasn't stopped the spread of tall tales and urban legends about the beloved children's TV host. Was he a Navy SEAL? Did he have secret tattoos? Did the man behind the legendary cardigan actually live a double life, or was it all make-believe? Let's get comfortable and slip into our sweaters and sneakers as we take a look at five rumors about Mr. Rogers. Was Mr. Rogers a Navy SEAL or a sniper in the Vietnam War? This has got to be the most popular Mr. Rogers rumor out there. This urban legend runs rampant in some circles of the internet. I mean, how could you not believe this totally not photoshopped version of Mr. Rogers? The rumor also said that he wore cardigan sweaters to hide his military tattoos and that he had a crazy amount of confirmed kills. Mr. Rogers was never in the military, but let's break it down. Mr. Rogers was simply too old to have been in the Vietnam War. He was born in 1928, the Navy SEALs were founded in 1962, and the US didn't have soldiers on the ground in the Vietnam War until 1965, which would put Rogers at about 37 years old. He did register for the draft in 1948 when he was 20 years old and in college. He was initially classified 1A, which means available for military service. However, two years later in 1950, an armed forces physical changed his status to unqualified. On top of that, he was red-green colorblind, which disqualifies you from becoming a Navy SEAL. If that's not enough to disprove the rumor, Mr. Rogers simply didn't have enough time to fight in the Vietnam War. When the Vietnam War started in 1955, he had enrolled in the Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, where he got his Master's in Divinity after eight years. While he was working towards his degree, he was also working on The Children's Corner, a children's TV show where Mr. Rogers developed music, puppets, and characters for, many of which would end up on Mr. Rogers' neighborhood later on. When the Navy SEALs were founded in 1962, Mr. Rogers was actually in Toronto, Canada working on Mr. Rogers, the Canadian predecessor to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. This was the first time he appeared on screen as the host of the show. Mr. Rogers was also a pacifist who opposed the Vietnam War. In 1968, the first week of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood back in the United States, he addressed the war by using the puppets of the neighborhood of make-believe to advocate for peace to the stubborn King Friday. The whole neighborhood wants peace. His opposition to war continued during the Gulf War where he praised his friend Senator John Hines for introducing a bill that would exempt one parent of military couples from being sent to war, arguing that separation between a child and their parent is a form of abuse. He always tried to see things through the eyes of a child and knew that things like war were scary for them. As for the tattoos, there are instances where we see Mr. Rogers' arms exposed on the show. He was a big swimmer and in an episode of The Neighborhood on Discipline and Exercise, we can see his arms and would you look at that? No tattoos. Fun fact, all those nice cardigan sweaters were knit by his mom. The Navy SEALs even have a dedicated page on their website to address this rumor and tell you that it's nothing more than an urban legend, straight from the horse's mouth. Maybe people are confusing Mr. Rogers with the other legendary and calm television icon, Bob Ross, who actually served in the United States Air Force as a drill sergeant. I think we can officially declare this rumor debunked. Did Mr. Rogers flip off kids on the final episode in the year 2000? This image of Mr. Rogers seemingly flipping the bird is pretty iconic. I mean, hell, that's why I use it for the thumbnail. Mr. Rogers must have thought, it's my last episode, what are they gonna do, cancel me? Well, this picture is not from the year 2000. It's actually from 1968, the first year Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood aired. He's actually just teaching the kids a nursery rhyme called Where is Thumpkin? In the song, the kids are supposed to put up the corresponding finger when they are named. The middle finger is called Tall Man. Where is Tall Man? Where is Tall Man? Here I am. That's all this one is. Just a harmless, out-of-context image of a nursery rhyme. I used to believe this rumor too before I knew the story, but hey, he's still a badass to me. And neighbor, if you're enjoying the video so far, I hope you subscribe to get more of my content. Comment down below your favorite memories of Mr. Rogers. Okay, let's get back to the rumors. Was he a child molester and was the show a form of community service? Okay, I felt dirty just saying that out loud. This is probably the most offensive and absurd Mr. Rogers rumor, even more than the Navy SEAL sniper one, at least to me. The rumor is he was convicted of being a mild cholester. Sorry, I don't want to get suppressed by YouTube. And as part of his punishment, he had to make a children's program for the local TV station, and that's why you didn't see kids on the show. Also, the character Mr. McFeely, the speedy delivery man, was a subtle nod to that. Well, we just saw kids in the Thumpkin video for the middle finger rumor. So that was a f***ing lie. Children were used once in a while on the show, but they focused on using adult actors, partially because of the troubles of filming TV with very young kids. They would no doubt pose a distraction to Mr. Rogers, too, because he was known to stop everything he was doing to give kids all the attention that they needed. This would derail Mr. Rogers' interviews off Often. Before an appearance on the Oprah Winfrey show, he actually requested that they don't have kids on that show for that reason. They ignored the request and so in typical Mr. Rogers fashion, he took his time answering children's questions. Which didn't make for the most compelling television, but hey, he warned them. The Mr. McFeely name for the delivery man actually comes from Mr. Rogers' grandfather, Fred Brooks McFeely. McFeely was also Fred's middle name. He was named after him. 
It's pretty crazy to think that a children's TV show hosted by a convicted criminal would stay on the air for over 30 years without any kind of backlash from parents. If hosting a kids show was even an option for these guys, don't you think more of them would have done it? Debunked. Was Mr. Rogers gay or bisexual? You gotta forgive me for this, but I have to ask you something. Are, are you square? I mean, are you a straight guy? Mr. Rogers' gentle and soft-spoken nature made him an easy target for these kinds of accusations. Some going so far as to cast aspersions on his manhood itself. Although Mr. Rogers was an ordained minister of the Presbyterian Church, the church he attended was quite accepting and inclusive, much like Mr. Rogers himself. He hired people from all walks of life to work for his show, including Officer Francois Clemens, one of the first African-American characters with a recurring role on children's television. In 1969, a week after the first anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., Fred and Francois shared a kiddie pool on an episode of The Neighborhood, during a time where segregation was still very present. This was Mr. Rogers taking a stance for what is right. At one at point, Clemens was a closeted gay man and Mr. Rogers asked him not to come out, fearing backlash from parents and sponsors. He even encouraged him to marry a woman. This marriage would eventually fail. Over time, more and more people were coming out in the public eye and he eventually changed his stance, telling Francois, I like you just the way you are just like how he would often tell the television viewer at home. Perhaps the source of the bisexual rumor is this passage from his 2018 biography, where he stated that he found women attractive and men attractive. Without any evidence supporting that he was gay and him never openly stating so, one can only assume that this is Mr. Rogers loving everyone just as they are. The truth is, Mr. Rogers was faithful and devoted to his wife Joanne and was happily married for 51 years until his death in 2003 and had two kids of their own. However, there is no doubt that he was an ally of the community. I tell everyone who asks me, no, he's not gay. If there was a, a gay vibe, I would have picked it up. There were protests at his funeral by some intolerant homophobic people, not because he was gay, but because he tolerated gays. Right, are you saying that he was gay? And they were saying that, no, no, he just, he, he tolerated gays. Let's go to a more lighthearted rumor. Was Mr. Rogers' car stolen and then returned by fans of the show? This next rumor has a couple variations, but the basic premise is that Mr. Rogers' car was stolen, and then when the thieves found out whose car it was, they gave it back. Some versions say it was stolen while he was babysitting his grandson, and others say it was near the television station where Mr. Rogers' neighborhood was being filmed. Later versions also claim that thieves left an apology note and that they figured out it was Mr. Rogers' car based on paperwork in the car or maybe some TV props. Coincidentally, a similar story was spread about Scottish poet James Montgomery where thieves stole some items from him and also left behind a note. <clears throat> Honored sir, when we robbed your house, we did not know that you wrote such beautiful verses as you do. I send this desk back. It was my share of the booty. And I hope you and God will forgive me. Inconsistencies and similar stories aside, Mr. Rogers himself has never brought up this tall tale despite being interviewed millions of times. So more likely than not, this one's fake, but without Mr. Rogers here to confirm or deny, we'll just have to leave this one as inconclusive. But it's still a feel-good story where even thieves have a soft spot for Mr. Rogers, unlike the other rumors we talked about today. At the core of most of these rumors is the question, are you for real? Can a person truly be that good? Everyone who has spent time around Mr. Rogers will tell you yes. I can't believe someone can actually be this, you know, decent, a really, really decent, decent guy. Critics and skeptics might think he's too good to be true, but he was pretty much the same person you saw on TV. What you see is what you get. I guess genuine authenticity is such a rare commodity these days that you can't help but be a little skeptical when presented someone like Mr. Rogers. Even when you look up Mr. Rogers rumors on YouTube, you get a nice little fact check showing you that it's a bunch of BS. Shouts out to YouTube for fighting the fake news. As a man who taught kids about the difference between pretend and reality, I think Mr. Rogers would agree that these rumors are best left in the neighborhood of make-believe. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Unless you're Mr. Rogers, then you never become the villain. These myths about Mr. Rogers are pretty crazy, but some of the true stories about Mr. Rogers are just as incredible. Like the time he sued the KKK, or when he saved PBS, or when he saved the VCR. I know that's a lot of acronyms right there, but if you want to find out even more fun facts about Mr. Rogers, then watch this video right here. I'll see you over there.